uh, take a look today at NetBSD 7. Um, look at the you know AMD 64, you know X64 uh, version, of course. Although being NetBSD, it is available for a wide variety of systems. Let's uh, get a, a VM going. Way, way more memory than NetBSD needs just for doing what we're doing, but why not? Let's give it a couple of couple of CPUs here, and uh, yeah, I won't log in. Um, put the put the right CD image in, and we'll be good to go. So as usual, I'm going to go switch into scaled mode. So the text appears a little bit bigger here. And uh, as the text does appear a little bit bigger, do bear in mind the fonts will look a little strange. So let's run through the installation and doing some package install, and I'll talk about a little bit about NetBSD, um, which is, along with FreeBSD, one of the oldest of the, the recent batch of BSDs, and is... Uh, OpenBSD was forked from NetBSD. NetBSD's big claim to fame is it's on a lot of platforms, but it's also a great solid operating system, um, and it can be used on the 386 and x86-64 platforms, and it has great support there. So the other good thing is it has a very, very nice dialogue-driven installation procedure. Uh, it walks you through everything. It only takes a couple minutes, as you'll see here. Uh, it's very quick. So, nice partitioning here. Um, let's see. Get this five gigs in user and a gig in var. I may actually be using this image for some other stuff. So. We'll uh, set the size as appropriately there. But again, uh, tweak your partition layout for yourself. So the install procedure is actually pretty quick, as I, as I hope you'll see. It's created the file systems. Um, you know, we could be using a serial console if we wanted, um, but since it's a VM, we won't. And we'll do the full installation. So some of the some of the systems NetBSD supports that I've used it on are um, you know things like the ARM platform, Raspberry Pis, the Vax. I have my that's how I tested out and vetted out my uh, one of my micro Vaxes. Um, runs nicely on a Vax. You do need more than eight gigs of memory to really run it well. So I had a 12 gig um, micro Vax and it was able to run. Um, they say 16 is recommended, but I was able to, to do just fine on 12 gigs. Now the kind of this last step here is a configuration screen, and again, this nice dialog and menu-driven um, install procedure I find so simple. I'll just auto configure that again using the uh, the NAT adapter in VirtualBox. I uh, won't mess with the root password right now. Um, so we want to be able to install binary packages, which there are plenty of here. So we need to install package in and get the package database up. Again, this menu-driven system makes it all very, very simple. So this will take a moment. Um, again, because version 7 just came out, um, I think we're talking what, within the past few days, um, the main package repository here at netbsd.org may be a little, a little slow. You know, it's being hit a little bit. But again, that's pretty, pretty quick. And we also get package source, which is their version of kind of FreeBSD ports. And package source is pretty cool. Um, and now package source has been used on a lot of other systems. So you have Linux systems using package source. 
you have some of the Illumos or Open Solaris systems using Package Source. So it's it's out there um, being used uh, in other places. Um, so it's not just NetBSD that Package Source came from. Um, but yeah, so so back to some of the systems NetBSD will run on. I think it'll run on Microblaze now. That's Xilinx's soft core uh, processor for Xilinx FPGAs. Certainly runs on the ARM stuff. I think they now support the Beagle board and BeagleBone. Um, you know, of course, you have things like Amigas. Um, I run it on an iMac, uh, an old G5 iMac, um, which, which actually makes a nice little X term if you have an old G5 iMac. Um, unfortunately, it's got a bad power supply at the moment um, because Apple, in their infinite wisdom, for a $2,000 original price machine, decided to get the cheapest capacitors known to mankind. Um, you know, it uh, Vax, of course, it runs on, I'd Amiga. You know, it has a huge list of, of systems it'll run on. And that's pretty cool. So I think the motto was, you know, something like, it'll run NetBSD, which is, is not far from the truth. Um, the amount of, even going back a couple decades, like the Amiga, uh, that you you could run it on, and maybe not all Amigas. I unfortunately only have an Amiga 1000 that is dedicated to yeah, playing some old Amiga games, so... You know, so this is the slowest part of the install process was installing um, the package source stuff. Um, and yes, it's got to pull down a lot of data uh, for package source. If, if you just want to install binary packages, you don't need to mess with this. But I would recommend um, recommend using uh, package source. Just like if you're using FreeBSD or OpenBSD, use the ports. And I know the OpenBSD guys say, yeah, stick to the the pre-built packages, but if you're on a platform like Vax or Macintosh, they may not have built all the packages for you. Uh, so hopefully this will be wrapping up in just a second. You see there, it's pulled down about 400 megs. Data? Okay. Uh, we're not going to do that. Let's add a user. And of course, put him in wheel um, so he can SU. You Let's reboot. Yeah, just reset that now that I've pulled the disk out. go back to scale mode. So another nice thing, you get this nice green on black background. Again, these are little piddly things. Like how many times do you actually install, right? I, I go on and on about a text mode installer. Um, but really, if you have to deal with the pain of a graphical installer, you know, once every few months or every couple years when you do an, an installer upgrade, not a big deal. But, uh, but this is a text mode installer is critical if you're on an older system, say, your Vax or an old, uh, you know, SunSpark, another another thing that's supported by NetBSD. You want that text mode installer so you can just use the serial terminal. So, so here we go. Here we have uh, we've got uh, the system here. So I, I understand one of the updates is GCC. So we now got uh, we now have GCC 484 here. Um, I think there's some other changes around the firewall in version seven. Well, let's see. Okay, our our layout worked just fine here. Let's take a look over at over at package source. So let's see. Uh, one of my f let's see if we can put in some of my favorite editors. So all you have to do, navigate into the directory you want to build something in, type make. We'll do a make install and a make clean. And that's it. So one of the nice things about the BSDs versus um, Linux, most of the Linux distros tend to put Vim as your default VI. Nothing against Vim. It's a really powerful editor. I don't know. Slackware uses Elvis. I like it. The BSDs use a 
not Vim, a, a real or closer to real VI. Let me just do a make install. And a make clean. And now Elvis is installed. We've got Elvis. So that's pretty pretty easy. Let's uh, install Jed, another great editor, with the uh, package in. So this will do dependency tracking just like um, the package source will. But here we'll get the pre-built packages. So here we have to do the S language and uh, Jed. So So that's pretty easy, right? It couldn't be easier than that. So those are two ways to install software here. Um, there's a good collection of ports. Let's go over to math. Let's see. Okay. So again, they they've kept update. The update's pretty pretty recent. We've got R three two two. Let's see what other stuff is in here. Um, see what their latest Perl is. 5.2.2. Not bad. Again, big gripe about how basically everyone does Perl. And they bundle Perl with all OSs, which is great because it's the most useful language out there. But they also do package management to install Perl modules, which, you know, I, I don't necessarily like. And anyway, if you're doing any actual production work with Perl, don't use the system Perl. Um, that's a pro tip. Um, so we got a lot of stuff here. Let's see, about emulators here. So lots of, lots of fun emulators to play with. And this, this is where um, ports and package source, uh, these sort of systems, Slack builds to a degree, is you have the central repository where you can go and browse, look at what patches need to be on there, um, go back and you go actually to the upstream source. So you can say, okay, here's the upstream source, here are the packages that need to be applied to make it work correctly. And that's preferable. Build the software for your system. Preferable to just getting a binary package from uh, some repository you don't know what's been done to it necessarily so there's lots of uh, lots of advantages here well, let's just install another package so we can do that which will uh, install and clean and so this is going to be grabbing a few uh, prerequisite things, maybe GNU make, etc. Hopefully, this won't be won't take too long. Um, might as well try firing up X here. Um, I don't know if there are if there's guest editions. I'm sure that you could build the guest editions for this. Again, I typically do. You know, these sort of systems are, you know, text only, SSH only. So the, this is something that. I'll switch the network adapter over to bridge. I'll SSH into it. Won't really run X out of it. It is nice to have the X Windows system installed so that you can run a remote X session. Um, but I, I don't really do this as the kind of the main desktop. Although I have some old old laptop running NetBSD and old laptop running uh, FreeBSD, and it works well. You know the BSDs work really well on older gear because they have such low system requirements. They are blazing fast, right? So they're they're lean and mean compared to even Linux, right? So something you wouldn't dream of running Windows on. Yeah, you could run Linux, you, it'll do okay. But say you have an old laptop with a half gig of memory, right? That's really good as a, a NetBSD terminal, right? Or an old old machine with 128 and, you know, megs of memory. Hey, that can be an open BSD based firewall and router. Um, again, depending on how much data you're trying to pass on the uh, on the bus there. So so building vice it, it had to it had to pull in quite a bit of uh, 
quite a bit of prerequisites. So it looks like it's getting DVIPS. Well, let's cancel that. That's going to take forever. It's got it's got to build tech live. Let's just see if right out of the box if it yep. So, you got X Windows. Um, you'd have to tweak your X configuration to uh, uh, to get the correct resolution here. Not a big deal uh, to go tweak your X org uh, config. So, I don't know if I have a whole lot else to say about NetBSD. Um, you know, you may want to give it a try. Um, at the very least, if you have any of the long list of supported hardware and you need an operating system for it, I would go ahead and give this a try. An old Spark Station that, oh, you can't get, you know, Solaris 2.7 media for anymore, try NetBSD. Um, you have an old iMac that you want to, to actually put into use because they had a nice display, small form factor, you want an X-term in your kitchen like I want, you know, try NetBSD. Uh, and I, again, not too much else to say about it. Version 7, it has not bloated any. It's as rock solid as it was. The installation procedure is painless. And uh, a another great release from the NetBSD team. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, Please leave a comment below. Um, let me know uh, what you think. Thanks.